How House of Fraser went from drapery shop in Glasgow in 1849 to being on brink of administration. From humble origins as a drapery shop on a street corner 169 years ago, House of Fraser grew into a household name, the place for shoppers to go for everything from cosmetics and fashion to furniture and gadgets such as the hostess trolley. It was founded as Arthur and Fraser in Glasgow in 1849 by Hugh Fraser, a drapery warehouse manager, and James Arthur, a shopkeeper who bought stock from the warehouse. Their store was a success and they established a wholesale trade next door. But in 1865, they fell out and the partnership was dissolved. Fraser assumed control of the retail businesses, while Arthur took over the wholesale side. Under Fraser's son, who introduced its famous stag's head emblem, which was to represent it for nearly 80 years, and grandson, both also called Hugh, the business survived the Great Depression of the 1920s and 30s. It bought dozens of rivals and was renamed House of Fraser. It acquired its first outlet in England in 1951 and in 1959 bought Harrods, putting House of Fraser at the top of the retail world. Hugh Fraser III was made Lord Fraser of a Lander in 1963 but died three years later and was succeeded by his son, Sir Hugh Fraser. Flamboyant, dashing and enterprising, Sir Hugh, who took calls on a Bugs Bunny phone in his office, had previously worked closely with his father, who made him a director at the age of 21. Determined to move away from the old-fashioned image of the group's stores, Sir Hugh converted the original Fraser store in Glasgow into a high-class fashion shop for welted young women, and began to introduce boutiques into other stores. After his father's death, Sir Hugh embarked on a vigorous policy of expansion. During the 1970s more than 50 stores joined the group, including the acquisition of E. Dingle and C.O. in the South West, James Howell and C.O. in Cardiff, and the Army and Navy stores in Southern England. Between 1966 and 1973, sales doubled to over £200 million, and profits doubled to over £10 million. But after 1974, Sir Hugh was hampered by the worldwide recession following the rise in oil prices. He became increasingly addicted to gambling and a stock exchange inquiry in 1976 revealed that he had been selling House of Fraser shares to finance his gambling. In 1976, he was fined £600 under the Companies Act for the misclassification of a loan, and for improper share dealings. Sir Hugh lost the support of the directors, and was removed as chairman in 1981. He then increasingly devoted his time to working hard on behalf of the Hugh Fraser Foundation, the charitable trust set up by his father, to fund medical research in Scotland. Developments at the House of Fraser during the 1980s included the introduction of lifestyle merchandise ranges to attract younger customers and a huge investment in store refurbishment nationwide. In 1983 the Fraser Card, valid at all stores, was introduced to replace the existing charge accounts for customers. Following Sir Hugh's departure, a four-year struggle for control of the group began with corporate trader Tiny Rowland, who wanted it for his conglomerate Lonro. House of Fraser's new chairman Sir Roland Smith resisted Rowland's attempts to unseat him. But then in 1985 Smith recommended to shareholders that they should accept an offer from Egyptian tycoon Muhammad al Fayed and his brothers. The al Fayeds had purchased a 30% stake in House of Fraser the year before from Roland. In 1985, the brothers bought the remaining 70% of House of Fraser for £615 million. The company's stag's head logo was replaced by a stag leaping from a triangle. In 1994, House of Fraser was floated on the London Stock Exchange for £484 million, except for Harrods which was kept in the private ownership of the Al Fade family. During the 1990s, the company experienced difficult times, closed stores and cut nearly 1,000 staff. It also began to move direction into high-margin private label brands aimed at fashion lovers, smart career movers, and quality classics. House brands including women's wear, men's wear and homeware collections by Linnea and a women's wear collection by Therapy were launched between 1997 and 2000. 
In the early 2000s Jenner's and Beatty's department stores became part of the House of Fraser brand. But having weathered so many storms, in 2014 it became the latest UK household name to be sold to the Chinese, when a £50 million sale was agreed with Sandpower, owner of a leading Chinese department store. By then, House of Fraser had 61 stores in Britain and Ireland as well as one in Abu Dhabi and annual sales of about £1.2 billion. Sandpower had plans to expand it into other countries. Now House of Fraser, one of Britain's oldest and most loved department store chains, has less than two weeks to stave off collapse following today's announcement that it has set a deadline of August 20 to secure fresh funding. Richard Hyman who has analyzed the retail sector for more than 30 years, attributes House of Fraser's current difficulties to a lack of investment, declining relevance with shoppers, a lack of brand differentiation and a failure to focus on the store's core customer. Yesterday he said, House of Fraser has been a weak player for many, many years and gone through various different owners who have had varying degrees of commitment to the business. It's very difficult to see how this business will survive longer term. It is very much on borrowed time and has been for quite a while. It's a moot point whether it's now in the last chance saloon, or the room beyond the last chance saloon. House of Fraser now just 10 days from going under by James Burden, city correspondent The fate of beleaguered department store chain House of Fraser will be decided in 10 days, when a major bill falls due. Four city bidders have filed last-ditch rescue plans to save the company, with possible buyers including sports direct owner Mike Ashley and billionaire retail tycoon Philip Day. A decision on their plans is expected within 48 hours. The 169-year-old retailer's owners are scrambling to find funding before August 20 when concession holders are due to get a multi-million pound payment from the business which it cannot currently afford. Without a white knight investor, the chain is likely to go bust, putting its 59 stores and 17,500 jobs at risk. Bosses had hoped to stave off disaster after years of declining sales by closing 31 shops, many dominating high streets, and renegotiating rents on the remaining ones. But this plan depended on getting a pound 70 million injection from Chinese company C Banner and earlier this month the rescuer pulled out due to its own financial problems. It plunged the company into a new crisis and sparked a frantic search for another savior. House of Fraser has put out a statement saying discussions with creditors and possible backers are continuing. But industry experts believe a collapse is increasingly likely. Richard Lim, of consultant retail economics, said, House of Fraser is in desperate need of a rescue deal and, without it, it's inevitable that the business will fall into administration. The deadline they've announced puts a line in the sand for when that must be done, but I think it's going to be incredibly difficult. Department stores are incredibly hard to run in their battling against higher minimum wages, increased rents and rising business rates at a time when consumers have changed the way they spend their disposable income. For an investor to come in at this late stage is looking less likely by the day. House of Fraser has been owned since 2014 by Chinese billionaire Yuan Yefei. Bosses are still hoping a rescue can be secured, with possible saviors thought to include Edinburgh Wool and Mill owner Mr.